the first section is just a general introduction, and then it goes into marker types. Types are basically the shape of a marker, the form, not style. And now these are some of the old northeast ones uh, from a cemetery in Boston called the Granary. Uh, and you see over to the, to the left a skull, a winged skull. Um, and there's a little one behind the center one that shows a winged skull. Um, a lot of the markers around here are tablets. Okay, the, the next one, and these are roughly in order of complexity. Uh, ledger and Love Monument. A ledger is just flat on the ground with an inscription. The inscription is key. If it doesn't have an inscription, then it's not technically a ledger. These are low monuments. Um, they're thicker and higher off the ground than a ledger, but they're not really as, as big as what we would consider a box. This one is uh, sometimes called a Victorian flower box or a cradle. Uh, it's also considered a low monument. Then we go to boulder and rock. These are uh, rough natural stones, but they were selected and put in place specifically as a grave marker. In other words, this one's not native to that particular spot on the ground. It was bought and moved here and engraved. Some of them are not engraved, but they're still selected and moved. Uh, the next category is box, chest, and table. You see a lot of these in this area, the boxes. And here's one that's more elaborate. This is from the um, cemetery in um, Columbia, Tennessee that I showed earlier. And then these are table, because they look like tables. Um, then we go with uh, bed, coffin, and sarcophagus. Um, this is considered a bed. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but it actually looks like there's a crochet coverlet or bedspread on top of that and tucked under. And this is a uh, sarcophagus, uh, similar to the uh, Greco-Roman, uh, excuse me, Egyptian uh, sarcophagus. Desk and wedge. Um, very often these will have a scroll. Sometimes not. And we saw some of those, or a couple of those, in the cemetery in St. Augustine today. These are pedestals. Uh, even though the one on the left has a scroll, it's not a desk because it doesn't have that slant face. Um, it's considered just a pedestal with a scroll. The one on the right that's sort of a grayish, greenish color is actually metal. Uh, it's commonly called white bronze, but the metal it's made of is really zinc. It's hollow. If you tap on it, you'll hear it has a hollow sound. Um, those were uh, popular around the late 1800s, uh, early 1900s. The companies that made them have gone out of business, um, primarily manufactured in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, usually in sizable cemeteries, there's maybe one. Um, and then you'll come across a large cemetery sometimes where there's a whole cluster. These are obelisks. Uh, the one on the right is the typical pointed form it, even though it's covered at the top by a <coughs> shroud or drapery. The one on the left is called a truncated obelisk because it's cut off before it gets to the point and it's topped with an urn. A cross, you know, everybody recognizes what a cross is. Even if they look different, they're still crosses. The one on the left is a French fleur de lay. The one on the right is um, Russian Orthodox. Um, tree forms are not always women of the world, although around here, uh, most of the full ones like that are women. 
This particular one did not have a woodman symbol on it. It was in Massachusetts. And then a uh, sculpture. That's pretty easy to recognize, too. Sometimes it's cut from the same block of stone as the marker, and sometimes it's simply attached to the marker, like the one on the right. And this one is attached to the marker. Um, this is called a tumulus. It's um, earth-covered brick. Um, this one is a, a, a real crypt. The person, uh, the opening to the burial is there in front. Um, the casket was, this is back in the days when they had usually pine boxes, uh, that were shoved in. Usually there was a pit dug with, um, lined with brick or tile, and natural decomposition allowed the first body buried to <coughs> drop down in the future burials could be shoved in and, and go on top. This is a death house or receiving vault in the northeast where they stored bodies uh, until the ground was uh, soft enough to dig graves. And that's also a, a tumulus. The, the back part is covered with uh, rock and dirt. And this is a mausoleum. Mausoleum are actually freestanding <coughs> buildings that you can walk into. And the bodies sometimes are buried under the floor, sometimes they're in vaults in the walls. Sometimes both. Then we get to architectural styles. This is a somewhat subjective category that I call colonial. Here you see the wing skull again. And then in time we go uh, in the early uh, 1800s to classical. Uh, you see the uh, draped figure and uh, a pedestal. And on the right, you see the broken pediment. Those are both considered classical architectural elements. Egyptian revival. Uh, we saw obelisk in the cemetery in St. Augustine today. Here are different forms. One of them uh, on the right is a real pointed one. And then uh, in fancier cemeteries uh, with the larger, more expensive, elaborate ma uh, markers, you see Egyptian Revival uh, sun disk. And that element up at the very top with the wings and the cobra in the center is called a sun disk. And then classical revival. Uh, draped urns are one of the most prolific classical elements. On the right, you see uh, what's called a temple arch because that resembles a church or a temple. Uh, then it's topped with an urn. The columns have the uh, decorative uh, Corinthian tops, capitals. And then here you see um, the shell behind the uh, bust. The shell is considered a classical element. You see the coffin there and then the draped figure of mourning. On the right, uh, you have the uh, Doric columns. Uh, you might think that was a relic in uh, ancient Greece or Rome. This is Walter Chrysler's mausoleum in Sleepy Hollow, New York. Uh, it's also considered a, a classical Greek, uh, a classical revival. The Gothic is real easy to recognize. It has these pointed arches. Even if it's slightly rounded, it's still basically pointed, so it's Gothic. And there's a Gothic mausoleum. Then we get to Greek Revival. We have the, the plain, the plainest type of column, the Doric column. And this is Russell Sage's mausoleum in Troy, New York. Uh, you have the uh, gable entry in the front and then the simple columns. Then we get to modern and contemporary, and you probably are not gonna see this too much around here. Um, maybe thankfully so. <laughs> this is um, considered contemporary, although it's style sort of on the uh, lines of a Roman villa. Now, folk, you have a lot of this around here, and that's one thing I love about uh, these Texas cemeteries. 
<clears throat> the one on the right, you may see sometimes in an old cemetery in Hill Country because that's a German turnip heart. Uh, that was in the Pennsylvania Dutch area, um, and that same German heritage carried over into um, the Hill Country of Texas. The one on the left is a discoid shape. Um, that particular one is an African American marker in Middletown City. The one on the right is in a Hispanic section in New York, but there are some very similar to this in this area. Um, basically, it's concrete embedded with uh, pieces of tile, uh, little pebbles, pieces of glass. These are um, Greek Orthodox and Ukrainian. This is Ukrainian, and both are Ukrainian. Okay, and then we go to motifs, and this again is like your booklet, animals uh, first, birds, very common, lambs for children mostly, and then ethnic. Uh, the one on the right is Moravian. Um, I'm not sure if you have any of those around here. Usually they're in um, Pennsylvania. The one on the left is German. I would suspect that Hill Country has a lot of markers in German. And you see there on the far right, one of the upright wheats I was talking about, this is a Ukrainian cemetery. And there's a close-up of it. And these are Eastern European, so uh, Russian Orthodox. The Star of David is almost always on a Jewish grave. Very rarely is it on a non-Jewish grave, although it supposedly has been documented by a couple of people uh, that they found them on occasional non-Jewish graves. Figures and body parts, everything from angels to effigies. Angels always have wings. Fingers pointing, palm in, palm out, doesn't matter. And your booklet uh, gives more explanation about the difference between hand clasp, hands reaching toward each other, and hand shakes. And then in the cemetery today, George pointed out a real odd backwards hand clasp that none of us has figured out yet, but I'm sure somebody here will. And hopefully they'll tell me. Um, the one on the left is uh, Catholic. The one on the right is fraternal symbolism, uh, odd fellows. I hit it out of order, sorry about that. Oh, I guess it was under figures, because the all-seeing eye at the top is um, if you didn't know it was odd fellows, you'd think, what on earth is that big eye doing staring out at me? And this is odd fellows, and then um, the daughters of Rebecca is the female corollary, and that has the crescent with the stars. And these are Masonic, still Masonic, and Shriners, and the uh, double-headed eagle is a 33rd degree mason. This is Eastern Star, and your booklet explains the symbolism of each point of that star. On the right is um, a Catholic marker. And here you have Woodman of the World. <coughs> uh, that Catholic one, I forgot the exact um, title, but that is a union. It's something, something Catholic Union. Um, and I still don't know exactly what it was, what its purpose was. Okay, these are Woodman of the World on the left. On the right, I didn't find a Woodman symbol, so theoretically, if there's no Woodman symbol, it's not a Woodman. Can I ask a question? The one that you just put on the right, it has multiple names on it? Yes. Does this mean that? I saw one in one of the rural cemeteries here where there's a different, it's more square or rectangular, mm -hmm. flat side. 
and, and it's got a different name on each side. Did that mean that, that they were buried around it? Or? It could be. It depends on the layout of the cemetery. Um, it was the only one I saw like that. It may very well be that, that it's in the center of, of a plot. Uh, and it could be extended family or in-laws, whatever. Um, so it may be that it's in the center and they're buried around. Um, but it might, it might also be that it's just the way they decided to put the names on there and that the burials are actually on one side. You'd have to get the cemetery records to know for sure. Okay. This one, I haven't looked at the cemetery records, so I don't know for sure, but I suspect the way this cemetery was laid out, which was all rectal uh, rectilinear, I suspect that the people are all buried in front of this marker. And these are modern woodmen and the, the female part of it, which is the supreme forest woodman circle. And then, Confederate on the left and Union on the right. And that one is um, Grand Army of the Republic. I doubt you'll see any of those down here. That's the uh, Union equivalent of the uh, uh, Confederate veterans. The one on the right is a sunburst, and that's in a German cemetery, a Lutheran German cemetery in New Hampshire. Books and then that's a lamp on the right. It's kind of hard to see. And the anchor, is, as we mentioned today, does not usually indicate anything to do with the sea. It's uh, religious symbolism, meaning uh, steadfast hope in Christ. And occupations. Um, sometimes they're elaborate, like this one for a preacher. You see, it looks like a pulpit with the Bible and the crown. It's not really For children, particularly, looking for occupations, uh, occupational symbolism, I think, would be interesting. In religious symbolism, um, if you want to do a religious symbolism tour, I would suggest using a Catholic cemetery as the keystone of your tour, because the symbolism there is just so rich. This was in a Catholic cemetery. And the lady who was giving this particular tour teaches theology to Catholics, and um, I think she probably spent a good 15 minutes just explaining this one marker. Very involved. Most of these flowers are explained, and the symbolism is explained in your booklet. And we found wheat here today. I, I had not seen wheat here before. So we do know that that um, frequently used symbolism in the east and, and middle of the country made it this far west. Weeping Willow, we found a couple of those in the cemetery today. And that's very, very popular and, and frequently seen in um, Middle Tennessee, East Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, and then around what's called the Mid-Atlantic, um, Virginia, Maryland, um, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. The felled trees, I don't think it's in your booklet because that's very rare. That's in, this particular one's in New York. I've only seen a couple of examples of felled trees. And that's it.